for tuning in to BZBTV. Now, we've got a wonderful episode ahead, and we cannot wait to get started. Before we do, though, if you missed part one of our AV over IP series, you can actually view that by clicking on the hovering eye around this area. Now, for part two, we're going to be shifting our focus on AV over IP and how you can utilize it for your home. We've got five brand names that we'll be installing and also demoing for you all. Let's move forward with our very first brand, which is Atlona. Now, we've got the Atlona encoders and decoders. We got it all set up by our very own Chris Graham. Now, we're gonna go and talk to him in a little bit to explain and walk us through a typical AV over IP setup. So, let's go talk to him right now. He is actually right here. Come on, let's go. Chris, what have you got going hey, on here? What's up with this rack? Tell us about it. Well, we have a uh, Atlona AV over IP system, essentially. As you can see, we have the uh, VGW250 here, which is basically our gateway and our way to talk to the AMS software so we can program the rest of the system. Um, we have an Omni 512 encoder here, which is a dual HDMI source input, um, as well as the 112. The difference between these two is this is gonna be your residential version and this is gonna be your professional version or commercial. Um, down here, we have our decoders. These both are the same, as you can see, they're R-type, so these are residential. Down here, we got a 122. The difference between these guys is this, again, is the professional commercial version. These are our residential versions. Of course, we need to be able to control this system, so we're using a VTP 800 right here. And, of course, without the switch, we wouldn't get anywhere. So we've got a Cisco SG350 network switch here that allows us to have all these devices communicate to one another, sending control commands and so forth. Atlona actually recommends on their website, they have tested certain switches to make sure they'll work. Um, and you can go to their website, go to the certified switches and actually upload uh, the configuration file to the switch. So download it, upload it, and uh, you're pretty much good at that point. Atlona does offer a video wall capability um, utilizing Velocity software. Okay, and I'm looking at this VTP800 touch panel you say? Mm -hmm. So sources and displays, do I just drag and drop them to where I want them? Yeah, it's a drag and drop. So you grab whatever. We have two Xboxes and we've got a Blu-ray player. Obviously, Xbox right now is on display number three. May I? Yeah, of course. Go for it. All right. Let's see what we've got here. Okay. Ah, okay. This and is we've our got a movie player. on that Xbox right now and it's patent, of course. Let me just drag one more down there. All right. Oh. And there's our Xbox, and try the Blu-ray as well. You just close that guy out, hit the little X. Okay, our Blu-ray, mm -hmm. set it here. And that is an HDR 4K Blu-ray player, and it is coming through, looking very nice, actually. Okay, yeah, yeah, this is our Avengers. This mm -hmm. is a new movie we got. Okay, well, Chris, with AV over IP being this new technology, I know people have been talking about it for a while. Some people have not heard about it. Some people are afraid of it. Mm -hmm. What are some challenges that you ran into when setting up this system? Um, obviously, you got to have a little bit of networking background. Um, you know, with the Cisco switch, it's a little more complex. They do offer other switches as well, such for Meluxol and Ubiquiti. And, um, but that was probably my challenge, being in primarily an AV guy uh, with some networking background. I essentially tried to configure it initially myself, and then I realized, wait, I got a configuration file. Just upload it, and I'm done. Mm -hmm. So that's what I did. And other than that, um, I ran into a residential versus commercial compatibility video mode. Um, I called out Luna Support. They jumped on my laptop, showed me exactly what needed to be done. Within 30 minutes, we were rock and roll. So if you were to set up another system for us, you think it'd be pretty easy? Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. A very nice system overall, great quality too. Well, I'm glad you said that because we have another system for you to set up for us. That way we can show our audience. Awesome, I look forward to it, I'm enjoying this. Welcome back guys. So we have a brand new AV over IP system set up. Well, tell us what's going on. Um, basically, we're running uh, their VIP uh, 300H-U units. We have uh, three transmitters uh, running three different sources, our Xbox, our Blu-ray, and a Blu-ray player. We have three receivers um, for our three panels back here, which are 4K, HDR. Mm -hmm. um, so at this point, we have picture. Everything's looking really good. Okay. I don't see a touchscreen just like the last system you set up, but mm -hmm. I do see this little remote here. How are you able to control it? Is it just this remote or? Yeah, basically, um, you know, this system is typically going to want a third party control system such as Crestron, which they do offer a free module for, um, Savant, URC, one of those big guys. 
Um, but yeah, in order to get absolute control, you're going to want that. However, they do provide you with a little remote for mm -hmm. IR capabilities. So if this was behind one of your TVs, um, say in the kitchen and you didn't need anything else but a TV remote, um, you, could, you could use this guy and this little remote here to get you by. How about just from the buttons here, because I see they have a bunch of buttons here, so can you just control it from... You can. So as you see, one, two, uh, this is on one, we could actually go to three and it would change our picture. Okay. to the PS4. So yeah, you have that. There's also a, a mode button, which is a video mode button to change between, say, motion picture or um, data, say a spreadsheet, Excel, or something of that nature, okay. and audio select. Uh, so you basically, these, these guys have uh, a couple different analog and uh, SPDIF uh, audio inputs and outputs on them. So you can send your audio from this guy and get it over to this guy and decide which one you want. Oh, okay. I also noticed the switch. Is, that, is this the same switch we used last time? It's not. It's no, um, it. this switch is actually PureLink switch, which does come pre-configured from um, PureLink, which is nice. You mm -hmm. know, uh, essentially just bolt it in, plug it in, and uh, connect your devices. Each one of these uh, units here has its individual IP address, of course. Um, what's what's unique about it is you can type this IP address, say for this unit, into your internet browser and go into the properties and mm -hmm. actually do a lot of your configuring right there for each unit. So there's a lot of different th features you can do actually in there. We don't have time to explain, but um, uh, really cool aspect, um, which you, is pretty much a requirement in some ways. Um, you can They have a, a VPX software program, which um, when coupled with another program called Wallmaster, it gives you some, some different capabilities as far as being able to create a multi-view wall. If I got some time, I'm gonna see if I can get that taken care of today as well. But yeah, overall, the system's working great. and. Everything uh, was very simple, you know, it was basically plug and play. You don't actually have to have the VPX software, but it is a great installation tool as well as a diagnostic tool. So I do recommend it. It's only like 99 bucks for, mm -hmm. the, for the first level, um, which is what, you know, most people need. Um, so yeah, overall pretty happy with the system. Okay. What is one thing you think that stands out about PureLink's PureStream system? Um, they have the fiber optic networking in the back, so you can actually run fiber to these guys. Um, you don't have to use Cat6. You oh, have the flexibility okay. there. So that's pretty cool. There's a bunch of other little things we can cover um, later, but in general, it's it's uh, you know a very simple system to hook and connect. Just remember, you're going to want a third-party system. You're going to want Crestron or Savant or mm -hmm. URC, something of that nature, to control this guy. All right. Chris, look at this, man. You got it to work. Yeah, no problems, man. Hey, it looks right amazing. Together. Definitely. Tell us what you did. Well, um, basically there's a couple different ways you can uh, configure a video wall. Uh, the main way would be using the Wallmaster software program. Okay. Um, however, I ended up uh, going into each device individually and configuring it there. They have a wall size and position layout as well as uh, the bezel adjustments you can do. So a little measuring and put it together and that's it, man. Next thing you know, she's, she's running good. Well, looks outstanding. Great job. Yeah. Thanks, buddy. Yeah. Oh, hey guys. Just playing with this new control panel that we've got for our new system, which Chris was here to actually show us how to work it. Hey, and buddy. What's happening? Speaking of the devil, Chris, you have the system all set up for us. Please let our audience know what you've got going on here. So um, we're working with the Wirestorm system. We're working with the NHD 400 series. Um, and the controller, of course. We've got three transmitters and four receivers, okay. as well as the uh, NHD touch panel. Yeah, this is pretty neat. So I can just drag and drop to the display that I want. Perfect. Well, regarding this control, how else can we control this system besides using a touch panel? So basically, this is part of Wirestorm software management suite. Mm -hmm. um, use it to install the system as well as any diagnostic tool, you know, if you need to do anything, experiment. Okay. Um, but they actually offer uh, an all-in-one there. They got an Anato control system. Mm -hmm. uh, there's two versions. There's the Anato Mini and then there's the standard Anato. Okay. Uh, differences are the Anato Mini is going to be an IP-based control device only, mm -hmm. um, whereas the main one will give you IR and RS-232 controls as well. Okay, perfect. And how about the switch? I see that you've yeah. got the Cisco back on here. Yeah, we were able to reuse the SG350, wipe out the previous configuration. Um, they give you directions for configuring the Cisco switch. Pretty self-explanatory, uh, steps one through 10 and done. Okay. Not too bad at all. 
Well, regarding the Wirestorm Network HD, what do you feel stands out about this system? Um, you know, I like the uh, Inato software control program that can be incorporated with it that's meant to drive it. Mm -hmm. um, that's a nice feature, not too expensive, mm -hmm. relatively affordable, um, as well as the BYOD that you can get with that. So you can use the iPad or Android devices, virtually any tablet and almost any phone to control the system. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Well, I know in the previous system you were able to do a vi video wall. Mm -hmm. Are you cap Is this system capable of such? Yeah, it's you know it's a 4K HDR system as well as it gives you the ability to do a video wall up to a 16 by 16 configuration, which is a lot of panels. As you can see, we have uh, hooked up the video wall for our Wirestorm in HD 400 series. We're watching a little bit of Top Gun right now. Of course, it's a little old school 1080p with our monitors here, but a um, couple settings in the uh, management suite software, and uh, we got picture. Uh, really happy with the uh, configuration overall, very simple. Uh, it took me probably 15, 20 minutes to uh, set this up. I think measuring the TVs took the longest. Um, other than that, you have an app, NHC Touch, that actually will allow you to see what you're doing. Gives you the actual four panels on the display. So pretty simple, create a group, uh, configure your RXs, and um, relatively simple, 20 minutes, and you're good to go. Mm -hmm. Well, Chris, we're not quite done. We have a couple more systems we want you to set up for us. Yep. So guys, stick around for that. Welcome back guys. We've got a brand new AV over IP system and Chris, if you can please introduce us to these boxes here. Sure, so um, we're working with Key Digital. So we have our KDIP922 encoders here with HDMI pass through, as well as IR ins and IR out, audio output balanced unbalanced and audio input uh, through 3.5. Down here we have our decoders with local HDMI input, uh, IR in and out, audio output, balanced and unbalanced. As you can kind of see, it looks a little strange right now. These are actually the back side mm -hmm. of the units. There is a front side. We can kind of take a look right here. Okay. So you can see we have our IP922 encoders up here. You can see some of the ports in the back, USB type B, as well as our service connection, EDID table, our second network uh, connection. And then down here, we have our decoders with USB Type-A for extensions, uh, service, and then that nifty little input select button right here for a local source. What's nice about the front side there is you can actually toggle between displays. So if you actually have a local source within your, say, DVD cabinet in your mm -hmm. family room, and the customer's like, I want to be able to walk up to that DVD player and just put it in. I don't want to walk across the house. Um, it's got the local input source here, and there's actually a button on the unit, as well as, of course, you can program it into your control system mm -hmm. um, that will allow you to toggle between the two. Okay. Well, Chris, you've successfully installed four different AV over IP systems now, so you're mm -hmm. almost there at expert level. Tell us about installation. How was installing the system? This system um, was not too bad. Uh, basically, Key Digital has a management software program that will work with their Compass Control as well. Mm -hmm. um, but initially, you get the, uh, the, key, the management program. You connect to each device with your switch, as well as a USB cable. So a little different with the USB cable. Um, assign your IP addresses. They come default with one. Um, make sure you got your switch configured. Mm -hmm. They do have directions for the switch configuration. Okay. Um, as well as their certified list. Always look at the certified list. It's definitely mandatory. Okay. Um, other than that, it was pretty a pretty nice system to, to program. It also does a 16 by 16 video wall. Um, kind of running out of time today to set that up, but if I can squeeze it in, I will. Okay. And in the subject of control, I see that there's an iPad here. Mm -hmm. How else can we control this system? Well, they do offer uh, Key Digital Management Software uh, iPad program app for basic control here. Um, of course, the Compass Control is going to be what you want to get in the long run when it comes down to controlling all your devices, your cable boxes, DVD players, and so forth. Okay. So, yeah, overall works pretty good, fairly granular, you know, but um, until you get the control program. Okay, so the, what you would be putting either on your smartphone or this iPad is just a basic app? Well, yeah, it's a key digital app. Okay. So um, it only works with uh, Apple devices, iPads, iPhones, okay. iTouches. Good. Good to know. Um, doesn't work with uh, Android devices at this time. Okay. All right. Well, I think we covered a lot about the system. I'm sure we'll talk a little bit more. That's actually going to be in episode three. We'll talk about all these systems in detail. Mm -hmm. However, we're not quite done yet. No, we got one more system to go, so um, we're going to get the Kramer, our last and final uh, system installed. Okay. And then, uh, yeah, we'll cover video three. We're going to give you some breakdowns on uh, where we feel these things are going to um, be implemented best, which systems 
and your different options and configurations and specs, of course. All right. Well, Chris is going to set up the very last system, so stay tuned, guys, and we'll be back. All right. We are down to our very last AV over IP system. Chris, can you please tell us more about it? Uh, yeah, so we're working with the Kramer uh, AV over IP system. So here we're utilizing uh, the KDS EN6 encoders with channel select and the KDS GEC6 decoders with channel select. Um, we decided to go with our Cisco SG350 switch. Uh, Kramer does uh, prefer the Luxol switches. They actually sell them. Mm -hmm. You can get them pre-configured uh, with directions or a file to upload, Okay, which is pretty nice. All right. And on these devices, I'm seeing that there's a channel select buttons on them. I'm looking at the decoder here. I know the encoder has them as well, but is it basically just switching the source, like showing one right here? Yeah, so source one, source two, pretty simple overall. You change the source on the decoder, okay. and within about three, four seconds, you have a picture change to your other source. All right, and on the subject of control, how else can we manage this system? So initially to set these up, um, you're basically just going to log into each device. So you're going to type in the IP address, which is by default 192.168.1.39. You got to memorize and, that. Oh yeah, of course. And you're going to change each one, uh, one at a time. Okay. Otherwise, if you put them all in the system, it's all the same address. So I you see. got conflicts. So um, in that console setting, you actually have a variety of uh, functions and capabilities, um, including you know, selecting 4K or 1080p video compatibility, mm -hmm. um, as well as even video wall okay. options you okay. can configure in there. So you don't technically need a software in order to get these guys up and running. Um, but Kramer does recommend Kramer Control. They have okay. a few different options, K-Touch, K-Config. Um, but Kramer Control is really going to be what you want in the long run, okay. along with like a SL240 master controller. Okay, and Kramer Control works with all third-party control systems? Um, yeah, so basically you can use third-party control systems, um, but Kramer Control is its own control system. Oh, I see. All right, gotcha. Mm -hmm. All right, well, another successful install as it looks like. The system is up and running. And Chris, before we end this episode, do you have any last words for our audience? Um, what you've learned with all these different systems? Yeah, I mean, all these systems are different in one way or another, either using a software program, mm -hmm. a gateway controller, or a console uh, settings where you're actually going into the device individually. Okay. Um, they all have different types of inputs and outputs. You know, the Kramer's got the USB extensions, analog, RS-232, IR. Okay. purelink has got the fiber optic port, SPDIF. Yes. I think it was. Wirestorm's got its different options. So um, you obviously, like any installation, you want to make sure your environment, your application um, is going to suit the needs for these devices. You, you picking the right one, which are convenient, which are comfortable with is important. Okay. Um, as well as whether you need 4K, 1080p, is it for residential, commercial? Okay. Um, how far are you planning on expanding it, video walls, etc. Well, there's definitely a lot of elements you want to consider mm -hmm. when it comes to choosing a system for either your home or business. And as a matter of fact, we've got a part three to this AV over IP series. Yeah, so um, basically we're gonna cover our experience with these systems. Okay. Um, some of maybe the more challenging aspects as well as the um, options, spec comparisons, uh, software comparisons. Okay. Um, so yeah, we got quite a bit to go over on video three. We will have a part three and this is a good time to remind you guys to subscribe to our channel, BZB TV. And also hit that notification bell. That way you do not miss out on any future episodes, including part three. And also, if you have any friends, colleagues that may want to learn a little bit more about AV over IP as a solution for your home or even your business, please share this video with them. We will have a lot more content for you. And if you have any questions for us, leave us a comment below. We'll do our best to get right to them and answer them. So, Chris. Sounds good. Again, thank you for setting this up five different systems he was able to set up. I've got a fair amount down, but man, there's, there's definitely a lot of options out there. And we want to be able to share that with you all. So stay tuned for our part three of AV over IP. My name is Florante. And I'm Chris. All right, guys. Catch you guys on the next episode.